Halas Alak. If you trust the Mayans, you are preparing for the end of the world as we know it. The Mayan calendar runs out December 21st, 2012, 11-11, I think. All manner of possible disasters will befall the Earth. That and a whip the size of Canada inspired comic writer Bob Robertson to write a manual on how to survive the end of the world. He calls it Mayan Horror. It is my pleasure to welcome Bob Robertson back to Studio 4 to tell us more hard to say horror. I know. And, it, and afterwards I thought, yeah, I should have, because people say to me, say that again, Mayan horror? Yes. Or. Or. I know. We could have called it Mayan mayhem. We perhaps. could have, yeah, but it just but doesn't, it doesn't match the cover. Exactly. With, uh, who is this woman? Well, is she know. related to you in any way? No, people want to know. There is a question in the back of the book that says, do you know the name of this politician and why she's looking like this? But I just made that up. I don't know who it is. And the blood dripping yeah, out oh of yes. the eyes. And by the way, that is one of the possible outcomes in, in 2012, when the world ends, that you, on the 21st of December, everyone in the world will wake up with blood shooting out of their eye sockets. Great. Yes. It's called plasma squirtopositis. That's what the ophthalmologists call it. Really? Yeah. And, and I mean, is that because the world will stop spinning on its axis? Well, or? that's another possibility. Oh, And great. for that one, I've got a section there that teaches you how to survive that. You need a tether, industrial strength, hammer it into your back garden, and you then will not float off the earth. That's good. And you can tether your dog and your cat and your wife the whole if family. you want to. Yes. You could be an elite family and like buy 20 tethers. <laughs> and, you know, tether your, uh, your DVD mm -hmm. player if you want. And the only people who survived the apocalypse were the tethered ones. The tethered ones, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who inspired you to write a book about the, the rapture, Armageddon, the end of the world, the Mayan calendar? Well, you know, I'm, uh, first of all, let's, let's tell it like it is. I only write stuff to make people laugh. Mm -hmm. So then we can go from there. But seriously, I've always, or at least for a long time, been kind of miffed by people who say, oh, the world's going to end on this day. Pastor Camping had two cracks at it this year. Harold Camping? Harold Camping, and he missed both. Uh, and as he'll miss all the rest. Mm -hmm. But even Y2K people that I talked to, they did right. the silliest things when Y2K came along. They bought this. So finally, I was reading an article about a year ago with Seth Rogen, the actor. Right. And he said he was talking to Steven Spielberg and George Lucas about some project that they were working on. Name Fine. dropper. And in the middle of it, George Lucas started to say, hey, we got to get stuff done because the world's going to end December 21st, 2012. And they laughed. He said, but no, no, I'm serious. He thinks, George Lucas thinks, at least according to this article, the world's going to end in 2012. I said, well, if George Lucas thinks that, the madness is just beginning. Yes. Does he have a Maya who's an ancestor? Or he what's better have a good drill? rocket ship. So, so I, at that point, I said, okay, well, I should make fun of these people. Of course you should, and as you know, there's many to make fun of. Yes, and Some I, religious, mm -hmm. some not, but a loon comes out of the woods every day predicting yes. the world will end That's in right. February, maybe March. But the Mayans, I mean, they were serious. They were real. Yes, they were they real. still are some but Mayans, But they were a super race in the days when they had super races. Mm -hmm. you How know. many years ago? 10, 50 or... Well, they started the calendar uh, like 5,000 years ago, okay. but they didn't really become a super race till around mm, the year one. And super race because they well, were brilliant at mathematics astronomy. and astronomy. But like a lot of super races, you know, there were lots of them. There was the Aztecs, the Egyptians, mm -hmm. the, um, gee, uh, the, the Atlanteans, you remember them? Of course. The Lemurians. Mm -hmm. They were lemurs, I understand, but they could levitate. <laughs> and apparently they, they would go to Uranus and back just to pick berries. Just so th <laughs> they were one of that super race people. You know that for sure, do you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, but where is this calendar? Where's the ca uh, It th actually doesn't exist. Oh. It, th they, they've got it. It's written down somewhere. The Aztec calendar, it, that's in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. And you can actually see that. In a temple? Uh, yeah. No, it's in a museum in or a something. In a museum. But the, the Mayan calendar is very similar to it. Uh, they're sort of connected, but uh, it doesn't actually exist in physical form. But So when it stops, yes. if they're right, yes. what are you going to do? Well, I think there's a lot of opportunities of things you could do if the world was going to end. You know, it's the bucket list thing. Mm -hmm. um, one of the possibilities is just to sit and watch it on TV because I have heard, and this is in the book, 
that uh, ABC is going to do a, a, a countdown with the, you know, the giant ball of destruction falling in, in uh, New York City in Times Square. And Dick Clark and Ryan Seacrest will sort of do the countdown <laughs> to the end of the world. Well, what if Ryan Seacrest I, and Dick Clark did not tether themselves in the backyard and the world ends because the earth stops spinning? Oh, well, they'll do this Who before that. Who will broadcast that? this? They'll do that before. Uh, and then when it ends, when the ball of destruction mm. actually falls in Times Square, then Dick and Ryan will float off. I see. Which would be a good thing for a lot of people, I think. But Well, as you write in Mayan Horror, mm -hmm. How to Survive End of the World in 2012, there are many uh, possibilities there are. as to how the world will come to its end. You've read some. Were there some that you liked more than others? I, well, I love the earthquake scenario because sure. I had to do duck and cover like you probably did That's under right. our little school desk. That's right. Hoping that when the big quake hit, we would be saved under the school desk. Well, and school desks, we used to do them because they thought that there was going to be a nuclear holocaust. Right. And so they had us duck and cover under our school desks. Mm -hmm. And what they've discovered over time is that wooden school desks are the only things that can protect you against a nuclear blast. An atomic blast. It's, it's a combination of the wood they use, which is eastern white pine, the graffiti that's carved into the top, and the various varieties of gum that are stuck to the bottom. That will <laughs> save you from a 500 ton mega, megaton bomb. Well, you know, yeah. when I was in grade, I think it was five, we had a chute that came out of the school and when we do those drills, the atomic disaster drills, uh -huh. or go into the bunker, find the bunker, any bunker, there was a little silver thing you had to slide down off the third floor. Okay, we didn't have that. No. We just stayed under our desks. I see. We had nowhere so to I go. So I perhaps would have survived. But you, where's the Diefen bunker? Diefen bunker's in Carp. Mm -hmm. For all of our uh, viewers, Carp? just outside Ottawa. Not far okay. from the Scotiabank place, where you could either see right. the Senators play or you could go and see the Diefenbunker. And these days, it's probably mm -hmm. preferable to see the Diefenbunker. I guess so. Because it's more satisfying. Is it a political it. bunker? Is it safe? It was built for John Diefenbaker in the, in the 60s. It's 100,000 square feet, four floors, blast proof. It's a museum now. But I figure if you get there and you're just casually taking a tour and you go, world's going to end any mm -hmm. second now, you're safe. Well, you know, during the Cold War, I mean, I had a neighbor who was a bit of a cracker, and he built a bunker, and my mother always figured if the world did blow up or somebody blew us up, you gotta get we to could know go him. to, uh, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Higginbotham's bunker. Higginbotham's bunker. <laughs> Mr. Higginbotham's bunker. People are building bunkers, seriously now, mm -hmm. especially in the United States. And, of course, they stock them with a lot of guns and knives, those right. people. But, uh, yeah, they're building bunkers. Well, do you remember the Morris Panitch play called Last Call? I do. Uh, nuclear War came, yep. and they said, you know, you will get a lot of money for a can of beans. Yep. You won't get much for an Emily Carr. Well, in my book, I say the way to prosper after it's all over and the dust is settled is you go through all the wrecked cars, because there'll be thousands, millions of wrecked cars. You go through them. In the glove compartments, you should open them up, and if it's like my car, you will find, I don't know, thousands of uh, pieces of Canadian tire dollar bills or 25 cent bills. Mm -hmm. Collect them all. You own the currency in the world. Uh, Canadian tire. I yeah, never thought Canadian about tire. that. That's one because of the, the tips. Because the banks will be gone, right? They will be gone. No mint. None of those things. Just Canadian tire money mm -hmm. left as your currency. Okay. But you'll be the king or queen. <laughs> the queen with Canadian Tire. Uh, I lapped all the way through this. I want you to know that. Well, that's that. what you're supposed to do. Well, it, one of the reviewers said, uh, you're way funnier than Peter C. Newman. Yes, that's Twice right. Twice as funny as anything written by Peter C. Newman. That uh, was very flattering. Very flattering. I wrote the reviews, but I mean, of it's, course. you know. As you always have. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but to keep us safe when the world comes to an end is a good thing. And there's many other ways the world could come to an end. Sure. We mentioned it could stop spinning. Yes. But there could be a plague. Yes. Many different plagues. Gnats. Yes. Boils. An outbreak of boils. Well, these are the seven plagues of Egypt. And I thought, you know, who knows? December 21st, any one of these old favorites could come back yeah. and try us again. And the 11-11 thing, is that Pacific time? That's Eastern when the calendar time? ends. 11-11 UTC, used to be called Greenwich Mean Time. Mm -hmm. So it's like 2 in the morning here in B.C. I see. So, uh, you know, really don't go to bed that night. No, but there are places we can be to be safe in the world. And when we come back, we'll talk about that. And we'll talk about the possibility of plagues ending us, especially that gnat thing. Oh, gnats, yeah. I died in a swarm of gnats. They're nasty. Ooh. We'll come back with Bob Robertson.